Now, Australia's energy market operator is set to sound the alarm on our electricity grid amid concerns the country's transition to renewable energy could cause major supply and reliability issues, including risks of blackouts and everything else heading into summer, plus more price hikes. I thought renewables were the cheapest form of energy. Meanwhile, the nuclear debate is heating up, and I am very pleased to welcome here to the show Dr. Addie Patterson, who was the CEO of Ansto for, I think, over 20 years. He's done something that nobody else can really say they've done, operated a nuclear power station in Australia. Um, Addie Patterson, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tell us about nuclear reactors, SMR, small modular reactor po policy that we're hearing more and more of out of the coalition, and how long would it take if we were able to get one of these things into the market here? How long would it take to get one of these things into the grid? Well, I, I think it's, it's interesting to see that the nuclear debate is changing, and it's changing in a positive way. And that's because I think the intermittent renewables and the big grid extensions are proving that we're going to have very expensive electricity. The argument has always been it's too expensive. But in fact, there's been a massive change. The cost of nuclear is coming down all around the world, particularly as the SMRs, the small modular reactors, are being built around the world. We are getting what we call a fleet effect because they're being built in a number of places at the same time. That leads to positive outcomes in terms of reducing costs in the supply chain. And ultimately, you get a lower cost of building nuclear reactors. Now, the thing that confuses people about nuclear reactors is that they are expensive in the sense that they are a high capital intensive uh, construction phase. But I compare it to the difference between riding bicycles to work and taking a train to work. If we get everybody to ride bicycles, which is basically what we do with solar panels and windmills, it's going to be very cheap to have individual solar panels and windmills, but you don't get to work very efficiently. Mm. If you have a train, which is more expensive, you get a lower cost per consumer and you reliably get to work because the system is designed to be always on, it's always available and it's working. So the government makes a fundamental confusion between the cost to the consumer, the cost to get to what you want, which is cheap, reliable electricity, and the cost that it, it takes just to have something that looks like that, which could be a bicycle if you're thinking in commuter term. And in so I think comparing panels to nuclear power is a fundamental category in the state. It's like a bicycle being compared to a train. And, you know, in this other sort of element, too, uh, of this, Dr. Patterson, there's the issue of um, whether or not we're taking into account properly the cost of everything involving the renewables, not just the solar panels, but the cost of getting that electricity into the grid. Whereas much of what I'm reading about these SMRs is, is that there's a potential to put them very close to where the grid already exists, um, maybe where coal stations already have sat in the past, plugging them straight in without all of the issues around going through farmland, bushland, endangered species, agriculture, and everything else. The great tragedy is that we're already destroying species that are at risk. And we're doing this in Queensland, where they're ripping the forests up along the ridges. And they're taking very pristine forests and they're putting uh, you know, wind turbines on and panels and fields. Hey. Where you build nuclear power plants is where the grid already is. So you could, for instance, take an existing uh, brown coal plant in Victoria or a black coal plant in New South Wales. And that community could then benefit from a retrofit of a small modular reactor. These are reactors uh, that are already available. The first ones are under construction in uh, the United States, and they've just been certified for construction in Canada. The build time in Canada is four years. Um, and I was talking to uh, somebody yesterday from Canada about that project. Um, it's uh, a GE BWRX 300. It's, uh, it's a design which is being certified in Canada at the moment. And their projected build time, start to finish, for a reactor that would retrofit on a, on a coal plant in Australia is four years. And so this idea that it's expensive and it takes a long time is fundamentally wrong. It's, it's, it's just a mystification and a misunderstanding. And it's also based on the idea that somehow we can actually have cheaper electricity with long new grids ripping through farmlands 
and you know fields and fields full of, of panels. I mean, the, the field of panels that you just showed in the clip uh, would only survive um, a really strong rainstorm. But if that happened to experience a, a hailstorm, that would be the end of those solar panels. Um, and we've seen that already in Australia, but it wasn't widely reported. But it certainly also happened recently um, in Europe, uh, mm. where they had some significant hailstorms and uh, damaged these fields full of panels.